Mary is 48 years old, the mother of five children ranging in age from 12 to 21. Carrie was convicted of torturing and murdering another woman by injecting her with a syringe of battery acid. I've been on the road a little over five years, but I've been in prison nine years. Do you have feelings of regret? Definitely. Or remorse for all the things Definitely. you did that all added up to whether it was that crime Definitely. or not? Definitely. Regret, shame, remorse, of course. I've committed armed robberies. I've committed burglaries. I'm by no means some angel, poor, innocent, picked up out of society. My life took me here. And prison ain't cool. I've been coming to prison. This is my seventh time coming to prison. That night in 1988, everybody was at my house. Carrie, Melanie, TK, and Cheryl Baker. They ended up starting to use meth. It wasn't unusual for people to come and get high and spend the night, but I was not high that day. Carrie was the ringleader. She was the shot caller, telling people what to do and how to do it. They were listening. Melanie came up to me. We were washing the dishes. She grabbed the kitchen knife and said she wanted to stab Carrie and then told me that they're going to kill me. And I'm all like, thinking like she's this girl's nuts like what are you talking about i just thought the girl was high and off her rocker the next morning tk and cheryl dropped me off at my friend's house the only people that were left at my house were carrie and melanie a couple hours later tk was supposed to pick me up never showed when I got home, I just saw all my stuff outside. The trash can was dumped all over the ground, and I pull out this pillow full of blood, and I'm all like, what the heck? Stuff was missing, stuff was moved. I started seeing electric cords that were, uh, you could tell us that somebody was bound up and it was cut. I had a chandelier lamp in my room that there was no lamp anymore. There was two bare wires. And in the other room, I find this knife that hair and skull on it, like a piece of scalp and then long hair. I knew something bad happened to her, Melody May. There was no doubt in my mind she was killed that day. There were three individuals that the prosecutor charged in connection with Miss May's murder. Carrie Lynn Dalton, Mr. Tompkins, and Miss Baker. Mr. Tompkins pled guilty to first-degree murder. Ms. Baker agreed to cooperate with the prosecution, pled guilty to second-degree murder. Carrie Lynn Dalton was the only one who chose to go to trial. Carrie Lynn's case was built entirely on witness testimony. Baker testified that she and Tompkins left to go get drugs. And when they returned, Carrie Lynn had Melanie tied to a chair with a sheet over her head. Cheryl says that Carrie Lynn accused Melanie of being a snitch. Carrie Lynn showed Cheryl some syringes filled with battery acid, at which time she instructed her to inject Melanie with it. Miss May, the victim, was bound she was hit over the head with a skillet, and then she was stabbed numerous times. The individuals then took her body and disposed of it. Her body was never found. I just, um, I, I checked out, you know. That was my wife. I was very much in love with her. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I got lost and, you know, lost myself, just staying high and just not wanting to feel anything or think about it even, because it was too, it was too messed up. I didn't murder them for what they did to her and I didn't cooperate with the police. 
And um, that's a hard thing to live with, you know? That's been a hard thing to live with. Carolyn Dalton was found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder, of murder, and the jury found what are called two special circumstances. One was that the murder was committed while lying in wait, and the other one was that the murder was committed by way of torture. The jury came down with a death penalty in this case because they determined that Miss Dalton was irretrievable and that what she had done, the way she had done it, and the life that she led before that murder merited the death penalty. I have to be honest, I don't really remember much at all. been real fortunate to have Sister Helen Prejean join us. us the sister is like the, the leader of the entire anti-death penalty cause. When you're on death row, you receive a thousand signals a day that you're nothing more than disposable human waste. You are so hated by society. You are so not worth living. What people need to know about persons on death row is that they're persons. Guilty or innocent, nobody should be killed by the state. And that's the essential human, personal human rights thing. Hello? Carrie Lynn, hi. Hi. Hi, I'm right here by Victoria's side. So good to talk to you. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Helen and I are talking right now today about looking for new lawyers for you. And I will really like that. I've been praying real hard. I'm in a kind of a little bit of a depression right now. Well, That's we certainly, I certainly would be too, Carrie. You're doing great. I'm so blessed to have people up there that are trying to help me. You know, the fact that moratorium are happening in states and say, oh, well, there's no death penalty. Hey, we got rid of that. There's all kinds of ways of dying all the ways that life is diminished. Because no matter what you do, no matter how you change your life, you can never get out of prison again. Your mother had a rose tattooed on her chest. Oh. So that's why I have the rose there. And then it's put in loving memory. My relationship with him is kind of estranged, estranged because, you know, throughout the years, he's been an addict. And for my own heart, I have to distance myself from things like that. Do you think if she hadn't been on drugs, it would have been different? Uh, absolutely. Was she it was different, you know, because, oh, you know, the first time he, when you guys were taken, we got off drugs, and we uh, did everything we were supposed to do, and we got you back. You were a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful child, and uh, we both loved you very much, you know? And we just, uh, we didn't know how to do it properly. I think that's what hurts the most. I've never heard, been able to hear my mom say that. Because she said it. You just don't I know. remember it. I know. You know, but she said it. 